don't tell many people my story. I want people to see what I've become from that story before they know what I've been through. I met Joe's dad my freshman year. We dated all through college. Um, we got married after graduation, started a family, bought a house. When I was three months pregnant with Joseph, um, Ted got sick and we found out that he had leukemia. He did eight rounds of chemo and the day before he finished, or the day after he finished, Joseph was born the next day. Um, so he got to come to the hospital and see him. Then he had pneumonia, so he didn't get to come home for three or four more weeks. It involved me taking care of both of them round the clock, hanging IVs and administering medicine, um, feeding bottles, changing diapers, and then the cycle would start all over again. But fortunately, I had a lot of help and a very supportive family, so I had lots of people coming over and, and you know, making sure that everybody had everything they needed and got a little bit of sleep, so it was, it, it, we did it, we all muddled through it. He did finish his treatment and he was in remission for a few months. Then we found out that he fell out of remission and so we had a bone marrow transplant. His sister Maria was the donor. On day 100 when you go back, you go to the hospital every day and um, when you're supposed to be free and clear, they told us that it didn't work. That was at Easter that year. He died um, July 1st, the day before Joseph turned one. And he went through the whole process and fought, fought that fight. But uh, I guess it's just God's plan was to, to bring him to heaven. I don't remember, but it was I, it was tough for my mom. I know I spent when I was a baby. I spent a lot of time at my grandparents, and my mom's parents took care of me. I met Michael, and he was a blessing. I taught with his sister in. Um, Houston. I called my sister and said, hey, I'm going to be in Houston. I haven't seen you in a while. Let's go out to dinner and get something to eat. And she picked me up in, at the airport and she brought Rosie and that's where I first met her. Then, And that's how it kind of all came together from there. The day that he was supposed to come for to go to dinner, I picked Joseph up from the babysitter and we knew something was wrong. And so I took him to the emergency room where I found out that he had a tumor. The next day we had to go in for surgery and then we were referred to Texas Children's where they told me he had um, a rhabdomyosarcoma, which is a, a, an aggressive, fast-growing tumor. I was so young at the time, I didn't even know what cancer was before that. And when they, when they told me that and the, the doctor um, pretty much told me that well, this is a fast-growing, aggressive cancer. There's no hope. And I'll never forget, my mom and dad were in this little room with me. And up to that point, I was pretty quiet, pretty shy. And I got up in the doctor's face. I said, who are you to take my hope? I said, we're going to get through this. And um, I think through the grace of God and my supportive family, and, and I had met Michael, and he was right there through the whole thing and you know somebody else could have turned around and ran but he uh, he would bring Joseph back in for his tests and he that helped get me through it and my brothers and sisters and my mom and dad and my co-workers and one of the things that really where I fell in love with Rosie is how strong of a person she is she's strong I mean very strong and I'm thinking if she can go through all these hurdles in life, then she could put up with me. I hate to say, you know, you, you know. So that's what really brought me to her is how strong she is and and how determined she is. And she's just, she's just, a, have a, she has a very big heart. 
and it wasn't so bad. My mom and dad would take him in for some of his treatments, and um, I would take him in some. That way I was able to work, and my brothers and sisters would help me with um, Joseph's sister Elaine. And somehow we got through it. We, we managed to get through it. It's amazing how people can overcome come crazy, just adversity that you never think is going to happen to you, but she got through it, and I look up to her for that. Football. Michael, Michael was really always good about getting the, all the kids involved in sports, soccer, volleyball, when, baseball. When he said he wanted Joseph to play football, I was like, that's dangerous. I come from a very competitive family. My brother and I were very competitive all our life in sports. My brother and I went, we went both, both two different high schools. We competed against each other. I mean, it's just in our, you know, it's just one of those things. And and I've always been very competitive. Even now, play basketball or whatever. You know, just you know, it makes it fun. I trusted him, and he would get out there and throw the ball. And he was one of the coaches when he started out. So when he started middle school football. I would always tell Michael, one of us needs to make sure we're at one of the games. And so we always made sure that somebody was there. And um, it was in October and they were playing South Lake. And fortunately, Michael was there. And I just remember Michael calling me. Everything's OK, but I need you to meet me at the emergency room. I'll tell you the rest when you get there. In seventh grade football, I was a receiver at the time and we were running a toss sweep, I think that's what it was, and I was blocking the corner in front of me. And I was just, I was in a blocking stance, I had my right leg back, um, I was just in a, you know, a blocking position. I didn't know, I knew the running back was coming that way, I didn't know uh, how close he was, but I guess he started getting tackled and the, the pile to tackle him was kind of right, right behind me. And my leg got rolled up on and I just remember like when it happened, knowing something was wrong. I couldn't feel it, but I knew something was wrong with my knee, so I'm just kind of rolling on the ground. Joseph is a really, really tough, tough boy, so Michael could tell from the stands that something was wrong and his knee was swelling up. Um, so they took him to the emergency room. They did their tests, and I saw a specialist in orthopedic, um, and he checked it out, and it ended up being a torn patella tendon. There was a time that I, my, my faith was, was tested, but never, never to the point where I didn't believe. He had surgery, and that was kind of scary because he was in a lot of pain. So, um, and then when he came home, they had to put him on this bending machine, it looked like an ironing board, and it would bend his knee, and so we kind of set up a little little room, it was like taking care of a 150 pound infant, because he couldn't get up or down, and he was connected to this ice machine. So he missed 34 days of school, seven months of physical therapy, and the doctors pretty much told him that he wasn't going to be able to play sports again. But you tell that to a 13 year old boy. And I would constantly tell myself, no matter how, how much this hurts, I want to get back to the point where I can play sports again. I didn't want to, I didn't want my story to be that I could never play sports again and just, I didn't want to quit. Someone told me I might not be able to do something. It was just, I wanted to prove that wrong. The whole ride of that senior football season was, I'll never forget it, that was fun. It was exciting and scary and I would worry and I would say my Our Fathers, I had my, my ritual and my friends would sit beside me and hold my hands and, and then he would do something good and we were here. It was, it was, I, I loved every minute of it. It was fun, it was exciting. That senior season, we, I was, I played with all my close friends, all of us, we were just such good friends on that team. And um, we worked so hard throughout our high school years and that senior season, we we went undefeated in the regular season, one district, and then went four rounds deep in the playoffs until we faced off with Trinity, Euless Trinity, who was at the time they were the number one team in the nation, according to some poll. And it was just it was one of those games that it was 
I want to say it was like replayed on TV because it was it was recorded, and so it was just one of those games that it was just a, a classic, epic battle between two two really good high school teams, and I, we were winning the whole game, but we came up short because they scored on the very last play. So that one still stings. When I think about when I think about that game, it still stings a little bit. I absolutely love it. I look forward to Friday or Saturday when we drive up, we load up the car all decked in our purple and we're probably the first ones to get out to the field because I don't even want to miss warm up. It's an experience. It's a memorable experience and you know, I love the, the coaching staff and all my teammates and you just get really close and I think my most memorable experience with the, with this team is, is yet to come but um, I'm really excited for the future. I love it. I just I, I just enjoy him competing and you know, win or lose, I just enjoy him out there having fun and do what he wants to do. I know it's I know he wants to win all you know ten games, go to the playoffs. I mean that's his goal. I want it'd be great if he can reach that. Um, uh, but I really enjoy watching him. Now sitting with the family that's a different deal because they're asking 99 questions during the game. And I like not to talk, and I just, I'm like tunnel vision, and I just like watching the game and trying to see how it's going, and I'm asking, you know, what plays is, what, what do they do, and who's in. So it's, I, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, I think at the end of the day, it's a father's dream to have any of their kids play the next level of sports. And to me, uh, as a dad, I'm living the dream with him, but just watching because I know that's what he wants to do. Nothing but positive, um, positive feedback and a sense of safety with him being at school. Um, if I have a question and I call up, they're going to patch me through to Nathan or to somebody to answer my questions. Um, the coaches will talk to us on the sidelines. Um, if Joseph is sick, I know he can go to the trainer and they'll take care of him. So when he's at school, I don't really, I miss him, but I don't worry um, because I know that they're looking out for them. I think the, the experience that my family and I have gone through is it's the it's in our it's in our hearts it's in our core it's our sole reason why we are the way that we are just focus on what he's done to get where he is today it's it's unbelievable i mean i mean i love the boy and i think we all know that i mean he's loving to death he's like one of my best friends just he's always there to support me treats me as if he's my natural birth birth dad uh he's He's a person that I get my competitive spirit from because he, he's the same way. We're always playing games. We're always, uh, we're always just competing against each other. I'm always kidding him saying when one day when you get married, I said, you know I'm your best man in your wedding. And of course Rosie's laughing, no, you're going to sit with me. I'm like, no, I'm sitting, standing up there with Joe. I mean, and I think the relationship we have is probably unique in any other way because I don't, I don't think a lot of dads have that relationship. Joseph is just a special kid, and, and I think seeing what he went through, if it's not from you know cancer, his leg, so on and so on, and how strong Willie is, he's just a good, mature young man. I use my story as just a, a motivation in my in my mind. I never I never say it out loud to people. I don't want people to think. I don't want people to hold me to lower standards because I think I've already been through so much. I I just use it as something that pushes pushes me through my own own challenges and you can go through all kinds of of battles whether it be cancer whether it be you know a family member passing away or whether it could be that's just my my own challenges there's just so much more that you you can accomplish in life and so much more that uh, that's waiting for you that you're gonna get through this. It's tough at the time. You know it's tough at the time. You don't think you're ever gonna get get past the struggle, but you will as long as you stay motivated. 
he is my hero and he is my role model. I just, he's my miracle baby. And so I just, I thank God for all of the blessings that I've had. And when a door closes, he always provides a window. And when there's a, something, adversity that we have to get through, something good always comes of it. So I know it's hard at the time. Sometimes I don't understand why, but I know that when I look back, I'll, I, there would be a reason why. And it's just to help us all grow and see something that's part of our plan. I'll never forget that. I got right, I stood right up there. He said, big, giant man, got right in his face. I'm like, you're not God. I said, who are you to take my hope? 